Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray one minute. Lord, build me. Because we are the church. We are the church of Jesus. When your life is built, the church is built. Come on, pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, build my life. Build me, build me, build me, build me. Hope you are born and just speak to God. Whisper to the Lord. Lord, build me. Build your church. Build your church. Build me from the ground up. One more time. Build your church. Build your church. Build it from the ground up. Build it from the ground up. Build your church. Build your church. Build it from the ground up. Build it from the ground up. Father, we are here this morning to be built by you. Thank you for how far you have been building us. We know that all that you have in store for us this day, Lord, you will do great things for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do the unimaginable, even in us, through us, and with us, even this morning. We submit to your grace and to your power and to your authority. Let your word find full expression and be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' most precious name, we are praying. Come on, say with me, I receive the word of the Lord today. My spirit is alive. My heart is receptive. Faith is activated within me. I'm transformed by his word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Have your sister. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Jam your hands together. It's not a cliche. Really jam it. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Always a privilege and honor to come to God's presence every day, every time. Right? Um, it's only those that have breath, right, that can gather. Right, people that don't have breath, uh, they are not in the sanctuary, but they are in the mortuary. Amen. <laughs> but then the Lord, we are in the sanctuary. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are continuing a series. Had a wonderful time in first service. I would trust God for more of His grace released upon us even this afternoon to um, walk with him even as the Holy Spirit leads us. Right? Um, just a bit of recap, then we get into the course of the matter today. All right? We discovered through the scriptures last week that the Ecclesia, the call out people, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. And we have also come out call out of depression, call out of servitude, or be call out of um, all manner of things that the devil um, has done. We have called into the marvelous life. We have been delivered from that. All right, We are to walk in the light even as in the light. Of course you know that we are not called out or delivered to, to be left alone. No, we are called out with a purpose to also go and call other people out. Right? And um, know that the, the call out one, they are the church, which is the body of Christ, the family of the chosen or the call out community. Right, and, and we, we say that the Father, that, um, God appointed people so that they can train believers to do the work of the ministry, 
according to the Ephesians chapter 4, 7 to 14, all right, and they can edify the body of Christ. And we said one of the work of the ministry that God called us to fulfill is also you fulfilling your own purpose, which is also tag, the good work, all right, which God has ordained even before the foundation of the world. We say that the um, uh, local assembly is the plan of God, all right, to execute all the agenda and the plan of God uh, on the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And today we're just going to keep pushing further. And one of the things that we keep querying, um, that I, I thought about through the week, I'm querying, is the Father, why, why church? All right, why church? All right, and I shared this thought uh, earlier, and I'm going to love to share it again, that you know, anyone that wants to sustain an impact you know, in life must learn how to organize it into a community or like a legacy project, right? When impact is scattered, it's not really impacting. <laughs> when impact is scattered, when, when energy is scattered, it, it, it will not really gather enough momentum to make the necessary impact that needs to, um, to, to be made. So, but when impact are put together, you know, especially when you're 50 and above, what begin to ring in your mind is that what am I going to leave behind, right? Going to leave behind the legacy project that or legacy community that I'm going to leave behind. Those are the things that you are thinking about. But when you are 30 or 40, you can afford to you know tomorrow, sow your seed here. Next day, sow here. I mean, you can disperse. All right. But when you climb to a point, you begin to find a way to put them together. All right, so that they can collectively, all right, speak. And even when you are no more in the scene, there is something that is speaking on your behalf. All right, Rockefeller Foundation today was a strong, right? And a lot of people that, that, that started companies today, Coca Cola and all of them, they are, their bone will have rotten, right? But the brand is still wise and strong, right? Come on, right, church? Yeah, so the same thing Jesus did. If I have saved people and I've allowed them to just go and live their life anyhow, how are we going to sustain this impact, right? So we have been called out then. There is a group and company, a community of the call out one that Jesus put together and put his name on it and said this is church. Hallelujah. So, over 2,000 years ago that Jesus had left the scene, the church of Jesus is still was and strong. He said, the same work that I, I do, he said, you will do the same also. Even greater works than this, you will do. Amen. amen. Come on, church. Amen, somebody. He said, greater work than this will do. And we are seeing the same exploit over and over again. Jesus healed the sick. We are healing the sick. Jesus opened the blind eyes. We are opening bad blind eyes, right? Jesus, you know, Jesus raised the dead. We are raising the dead. Why? Because he was able to organize it into a community of the called out ones to achieve the same thing that he has achieved. And guess what? When Jesus returns, he's going to meet the church. He's going to meet his church strong, healthy, wasn't strong. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout a believing amen. amen. So Jesus is really, really about bring, building a very strong family of believers, all right, who will carry out his agenda on the earth. All right, remember, you are called out of darkness to light. All right, you are not just called out of light to just enjoy light. No, you are also called out of light so that you can call other people out of light. As I was saying earlier, that you are raised to raise others. You are saved to save others also. The Bible says, go ye to all the world, all right, to teach every creature, preach the gospel. He said, disciple nation, nations. How do you disciple? You don't disciple people. You put them in a group, right? You say, these are my disciples. So God is intentional about the community of the called out people. 
Because it is in this community that its impact is what? Is sustained. It's in this, commu it's in this community of believers that what the agenda of God is what? Is established. It's through this community. Let me tell you this. The church, and I always say, is not perfect because we are not perfect. Right? Right? But God does not have alternative. The only option he has is church. Because he said it is his, it is his body. Amen. So, every of God's plan on the head is channeled through the church. That's why everybody must be part of a local assembly. Everybody. You see people that sing, you know, they say they're musician. They move from one, you know, church to minister now. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against that. Move from one church to minister and all of that. But the day they don't minister, they will go and sit down in their church and learn, right? You can't say, oh God, where are you? Where's your church? Say, all the pulpits they've called me to, that's my church. No, 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 you are, you are not part of us. You must be part of a local assembly, identified with a local assembly. So if you're an itinerant minister in songs, in words, in whatever, you must have a place you call home. So, no one is permitted to operate in isolation. Amen? No one is permitted to operate in isolation because the strength is in our unity. It's in our coming together. Hallelujah. So, when Jesus, the reason why when God looked down, he does not see you, he sees Jesus. Do you know the reason? Why? Because you are part of his body. Amen? So, when he looks down, oh, oh, let me tell you that one. Ephesians chapter, chapter 1. When he says you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, you think it is you that are seated. You are not. It's Jesus. It's one body. So, as long as he is seated, you are also seated. Because you are part of that body. So, nothing functions outside that order. Nothing is in isolation. Rapture also takes place the same way. Shall you get it now? Rapture takes place the same way. So when Bible says, as the wife submit to his own husband, which is the head, and Jesus is the head, the same way the rapture takes place. When the Lord rise, you know, appear in the sky, the body form and join him in the sky. So, if you are not part of the body, if you are in isolation, they cannot find you. Remember, when the, the, the mother hen, right? When the mother hen is looking, sees danger, and it makes some noise, what happened? The chicken, the what? They gather under, and they put a sheet on them. But the little one that is still fighting with worms, even though they are, they are, they, they are shouting, come, come, but it's dragging worms. Is the one that what the ark will see and cut away. So no matter how gifted you are, if you are not in alignment, when rapture comes, you are not there. Because it's only those that are in the body that, that is under subjection and submission to the head that, that is caught up with him. Are you listening to me? So sorry, shout amen. amen. So there's so many benefits of you being in the body. Body, not operating in isolation. Number one benefit is that you do have support. All right, you are not doing life alone. Jesus does not want you to do life alone. That's why He has organized us into a community of the called out, into a church, into people that can come together and represent Him. Number one, you have support. Support, not doing life alone. Number two, growth. You have a place where you can be challenged to grow and to be a better version of you. Spiritual growth. Growth in mentally. Growth in every area of your life. Number three, communion or fellowship. Deep fellowship. All right? In this place, you have connection. All right? Fellowship, which brings a sense of belonging. All right? We fellowship with one another. We fellowship with God. And fellowship with one another. Did you know what it means? He said, where to? 
or three are gathered. Not to gist. Are gathered. Not to gossip. Are gathered. Where? In my name. He said, there I am. My God. That's powerful. That's so powerful that anywhere you gather in my, where, where my name is, that is where my church is. Where my name is, that is where my church is. Deep fellowship, connection. Connection. Where you can connect. And I said, we can, we can gather, but not necessarily together. We can gather, we may not necessarily be together. So that's why we emphasize gather together. <laughs> because together is beyond the physical presence. There's connection heart to heart. Are you listening? So you can be here now and you are not here. We are not carried away by your physical presence. Where is your heart? Where your treasure is? Where your word? Heart will be what? Also, also, you can participate with God, God's self. You, you, you might be. We want to deceive God. He said that some people draw closer with me with their lips. Ah, ah. We also want to scam God. <laughs> they draw closer to me with their lips and their heart is far. Like how? So you think that God is being carried away with sharing, sharing tears, oh God. And but he's seeing your heart. Ah, ah. bros. The, the way you are displaying emotion is not diving with what is going on in your heart now, right? So we can gather and we're not together. Fellowship brings us together. We are connected. We are connected. Brethren, I was saying them, I said, church is a leveler. It's a place you can sit down with an MD of a company that will take you three months to see. Church will sit down beside you like a normal person. Amen. We have all manner of people here that you don't even know them. But before you can see them, you, you do like this. But in church, they're just a brother. We are brother, we are sister. All right? Connection. Connection. So in church, there is fellowship. In church, there is connection. We have sense of belonging. You belong to a family. You have house address. When God looked at you, we... Where is the fellowshipping? You, we know you. Now that says that everybody can gather but not together. There are people that we know. There are people that we don't know. Say, Pastor, you know me now. How? Pastor George, but I've been here. A, a guy sent me a message. I don't know whether you are in church. He said, I've been in, you know, in Freedom Court for, for one year. I said, okay. What unit? He said, I'm not in any unit. What Connect Center? I'm not in any connect center. Ah, uh -uh. who, who knows you? Actually, Pastor, nobody knows me. Maybe Mr. Femi. You know, they were talking about Dr. Femi because they asked me to do a believer's class one time, but I did not really go. So how can you say you are a member of a church for one year? You should cover your, you cover your face now. One year. And nobody can say that this is part of our family. That this is our family member. We don't know you. So what are you doing? You are, we, are, we will count you. We say uh, 560 people are in church today, but you are not connected. You gather, but you are not together. Hallelujah. But it's in only when you connect that you can co 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 collect. It's only when you connect that you can collect. Every grace, virtue, power, that made available to us, it's only through connection that you can take delivery. It's only through connection that we take delivery. No matter how prayer we can pray here, if you are not connected, it will not, it, it, it will not pass to, over to you. But today I'm praying for you that your heart will be open. I say your heart will be open. I say your heart will be open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four expression is in the church we find we have expression. Expression. Opportunity to express all that God has blessed us with. Opportunity through service. As we serve, we give back to God through service. I, I, I was sharing a lot of people, all they are doing today is starting from the church. Of course, you, you can count with your finger 
with, 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 with your fingers. A lot of people in the world today that do secular music, but they started from the church, right? You can remember one, two, three. Yeah. Some people develop their public speaking, you know, skill in acting drama in church. Vast opportunity. It's only in church you make mistake and nobody will judge you. You make mistake in, you know, in the pulpit, we will say encourage you. Next time you will do more. We will encourage you to be better. All right? But there's some mistakes you cannot make in some, in some levels, in, in a dimension, in a place. All right? In the world stage, you cannot make and that will bury the person for life. But yeah, it gives an opportunity to grow, to develop. All right? Join a unit where you can increase capacity. Data analysis. We have data here. How can I help? You must come up higher and do something for the Lord. And at the end of the day, it's becoming profitable to yourself. Every service you render to the Lord is rendering to yourself as well. You are helping yourself. You are not helping the Lord though. As you are helping the Lord or helping the body, you are also helping yourself. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, quickly, because accountability. All right, sorry, number five, no, accountability. So accountability brings order to, to one's life. This is a place where you can be accountable. You know, a, a young man walk up to me and he said, I, I, I want to be accountable. You know, and he said, I, I run a farm, I do this, I do that. But I know there's so much in me that I want to give out. But how can I, can I, can I submit to you? I say I have so much in my hand, but I'm going to plug you into you know a, a, a system that that can so give you that support. Listen, so people in church we come and receive. We have accountability. We have people that can ask us questions. If you are a man here that nobody talks to you, it is not a good thing. Or a woman and nobody talks to you. It's not a good thing. Let me now bring it all together. If you are dating a man that does not submit to anybody, that's not accountable to anybody, run for your life ministry. Amen? <laughs> run for your life ministry. If nobody can talk to them, nobody can ask them to sit down, nobody can query them, they are not accountable to anything, it is danger. It's a danger sign blinking Every, every red. Amen. Because nobody is caught to survive alone. We are, we are surrounded with people, parents, mentors, everybody that can hold us accountable. So, accountability. Then, provision for the, um, for the need of others uh, for needs to be met. Oh, the way the time runs, sometimes you wonder. <laughs> Praise God. So number six, in, you know, in a community of the saints, we have provision. All right? When you read Acts of Apostle, chapter 4, verse 33 to 37, was, I love that scripture. The Bible says, you know, great power gave apostles witness, you know, and great grace was upon them all. Then verse 30, 34, the Bible says, all of them, you no, know, there were any more among them who lacked and all that were possessors of lands or owls sold them and brought the proceedings of the things that were sold. Go on, verse 35. The Bible says, and they laid out apostles' feet and they distributed to each as, as any, anyone needs. They give, so I need 5,000. You need 15,000. Somebody sold land of 20,000. So, we distributed it, everybody, 2,000 years, 5,000 years, nobody in any way has any need. The need was met. Why? Because there was a provision in the church. Now, here it's so important to know that if you are, I said this very profoundly, um, the first time I'm going to say it again, that if you are saved through the gospel, it is your responsibility to what? to finance the same gospel to save others. If you are saved through the gospel, it's your responsibility to finance the gospel to save others. Let me even say this here, that the, gener the, 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 the financial capacity of the church to meet the diverse need of people that, you know, that, that comes to us is a reflection of the generosity of the people that are part of our family members. 
The generosity. Not even a function of how much you have. It's a function of what? Of your generosity. Generosity. So you must be generous towards God in achieving the goal and the purpose of God on the head. Through prosperity, the gospel is spread abroad. Through prosperity. Let, let me tell you this. Devil may not fight a church that is holy than he fight the church that is prosperous. You can be holy and be poor. No, no problem. He's going to be revolving around you. But to spend money, to go and pull something, pull someone out of dungeon and out of the pit, he will fight this. Do you, do you, do you see the reason why they, they, they always fight the church and money? I'm not, I, give, I don't give excuses for people that have abused it. There will always be people, right, that abuse it. But truly, when you really have your statistic right, you will see that there are minute numbers, insignificant. But because they have so much publicized it to our face, they have changed the narrative. They made us believe what they want us to believe. And we have believed what they are wanting to believe. And now a lot of believers are living in lies, in a lie. You have embraced lie as truth, in deception, covering our eyes to the reality of what God has called us to do, and we are being led by social media propaganda. Enough is enough. You must own your narrative. You must own it. And stop even trying to defend it. In this. There's nothing to defend. When you know the truth, the truth will do what? We set you free. We set you free. There is no gospel that goes to the ends of the earth under the wings of speaking in tongues only. Amen? It goes with what? With finances. Hallelujah. I was sharing today how, you know, in uh, um, YP1, we are transporting people. Some of you have seen an initiative. L -l 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 Let me see your hand. Free bus initiative. Let me see your hand very well. Raise it very well. Let's know who we have. So they love you. Don't even know. Across Lagos today, we are, we, are, we are transporting people for free. For free. To, from Moe to VI, from First Stack to VI, from everywhere, you know, to different, to, from Agege, from Agege to Ikeja, Ikorodu, to Maryland, and all of that across. In the, on a daily basis, we move close to 2,000 people every day for free. And even some, we provided breakfast. And why we also preach to them? Yeah, we can free breakfast. And we also preach to them. We share up on heaven every day. People give their life to Christ even on that bus. Do you think speaking in tongues? Cash. <laughs> we pull this on that bus. No! Don't be deceived. So much is happening. I was just sharing with them in first, first service. I said my heart, because of privilege of, of information, I can tell you that that bus is, that thing is sponsored by just few people. It's sponsored by a few people. And uh, because we are family, like I even said, sponsored majorly by Pastor Leke. But he said, hey, don't tell anybody. But because of privilege of information. And I said, okay, I've requested, can you send me a bus in Surulere? He will send it. He will say, found it. But I told myself, ah, ah, you cannot be a consumer. Right? You should, be, you should do something for the kingdom also. Right? I mean, if all of us here, 1,000 here, 2,000, that's why he said they gather and they distribute. So, do you know what it means? We are running this till December. Do you know what it means that people can go to work free of charge? They are not paying a dime. And their money can be saved to do something else for their family. That's a lot. That's a lot. We can do something. As a church, at Freedom Court, we can say one bus. We are sponsoring one bus as well. From, from uh, what's it called? From stadium to VI. It's not too much. It's not, it's not too much. We should not just be hailing it. We should also do something about it. Someone shout amen. amen. Right? So provision, this leads us also into social impact. Church is to make social. All right? I listened to one woman. 
praying for the person that son saw this born. He was praying it in Yoruba. I was like, ah, ah, how can this prayer be going to just few people? Ah, ah. Even, I would say, even if they don't pray, sir, if they don't even pray at all, they, they, I mean, <laughs> the act alone is blessed. Let, let me show you a story. Some, about two years ago, I, I lost my mom about three or four years ago. So about two years ago, or well, last year, I can't remember, I had one big breakthrough. So when I got to my house, I was like, wow. <sighs> I don't know what kind of prayer I pray in tongues that I did do to <clears throat> for this thing to come. And I knelt down as Lord, I think as I just knelt down, and God told me, He said, What you have just seen is the seed of your mother. He said, It's not your seed. Wow. I was crying. I was I was just weeping. This man is this woman is gone, but the seed soon is speaking. God said, that thing is not your work. Oh, don't think it's prayer and fasting that brought it. He said, it's the seed from the past of your mother that produced this. I'm like, oh my God. The same way people talk about generational causes, but we talk less of generational blessing. There's a generational blessing. That you are, that's why God said, leave that your father and your history. He said, you are now joined with Abraham. All right? So you are joined with Abraham. Now the blessing of Abraham has become what? Your blessing. That's, your, that's now your lineage. When you give your life, when you, the day you give your life to Jesus, your gene has been remodified. Hallelujah. You are now, you are now spirit genetic. <laughs> amen. So, so it is important for us to understand that. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout a bigger hey, Amen. You must understand that in the body of Christ, there are diversity. Diversity. All right? You know, you know, in the book of Ephesians, chapter number four, all right, we read all, you know, all of that. Please give me Ephesians chapter number four and verse 12 and 21. Sorry, verse 12 and 16. Verse 12 and 16, NLT. Ephesians chapter four, verse 12 and 16. Sustain as we begin to wind down. Ephesians, not Philippians. Ephesians. He said, he talked about the pastor, the teachers, and the apostles. He said their responsibility is to keep God's people to do his work and build up the church, which is the body of Christ. Verse 16. Verse 16. The Bible says, he makes the old body fit together perfectly as each part does its own what? Special work. work. Each part, each member of the body, they have a special work, special assignment. He said it's, it helps other parts also what? Grow so that the old body is healthy, growing, and full of love. So what is he saying? Number one. That the old body functions perfectly when we come together. The old, there is no part of the body that functions alone. They function perfectly when we come together. Number two, when we come together, we must do our special work. There is a unique work that you can do that not every one of us can do. There's a unique role that you need to play. Hallelujah. There's a unique role that you need to play. There's a unique duty that you have. No, no, number three, that as you do your part, you help other parts grow. You help other parts grow. That means people's growth, they depend on you. Come on now. Let me say that again. People's growth depend on you. What you bring into the common, you know, the common interest, what you bring together as a church depends on the growth of others, I know I, I was sharing us as well. That do you know that when we pray together, if you don't pray, if you pray anyhow, you can be discouraging people. Are you doing looking? For example, if I say, even if as I'm preaching now, I don't look at everybody because that's some people. As you are looking at them, you want you'll be dirty yourself. Pray, come on. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at their face, it's like, ah, if you want to pray, ah, come on. Is it that I'm not uh, teaching well? 
There are some people, even if you are saying rubbish, they are nodding their head. <laughs> to encourage you, come on, fire on. Hallelujah. So your gesture is also a seat. Someone shout amen. 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 Glory to God. So, so you help others grow. You help others better. You help others better. What you bring to the church helps us better. All of us together. So when you see somebody, we're worshiping and they put hand in the pocket and just looking around, what you are saying is that you are also sowing seeds to other people. Don't take it serious. All right? But I, I have been in a meeting that I, I dragged myself into that meeting. And as we in the meeting, one brother was praying. Ah, small prayer. The man has ran to one corner and was praying, vibrating. Before I know it, <laughs> before I know, me to start copying. Before I know, the jive, you know, the, the, the rhythm came back and I was you know, praying. So, whatever you do, you are communicating to the body. So, anytime you come to church, come with your best. Oh, come on, church. Anytime you come to church, come with your best. Because it's not just about you, you are also encouraging others. Somebody shout amen. amen. I, I can't hear somebody shout amen. amen. You don't know whether your amen is encouraging someone. Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Do your part well. Do your part well. As you do your part well, the Bible says the body grows healthier. The body grows healthier. The body becomes well, healthy, and grow together in love. Do you know why this is important? Because there's no one person that is called the body of Christ. No one person that is called the body of Christ. Body of Christ is, you know, it's a coming together of many parts. Coming together of many parts. The same way no single individual is giving the whole counsel of God. Every one of us have things that God has given. You know, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 19, right? Luke 22 verse 19, rather. Jesus Christ sat on the table, right? The last supper. And he broke the bread. Come on, listen to this. He broke the bread and he gave to them. And he said, this is my body. So he's saying, remember, the Bible says, Jesus Christ, I am the bread of life, right? So he was demonstrating to them that every one of you have a piece of me. Every one of you have a piece of me. No one person, no matter how he loved John, he didn't give John the whole loaf, but he gave him part. So for us to have the loaf together, we must come together. Amen. Amen. For us to have the whole loaf together, we must come together. But everybody is given different, you know, different giftings, different talents. Romans chapter 12 from verse 3 to 8. He said he gave some according to the proportion of faith, some prophesying, some ministry, service, some help, some leadership, some this and some that. He gave all of them a part of him, peace of us, peace of him everywhere, diversity in us. But that peace, as long as, as effective as it is in the marketplace, in wherever you are using it, but when we come together as a body, we are edified. When we come together as a, as a body, we are what? We are edified. Then you go again on Monday to represent God using your own part at the diversity that he has given to you. We come together on Wednesday. We come together during connect meeting. We come together during our unit meeting. We come together again on Sunday and do what? We come together as a body. We are edified. We are also what? Disperse. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Finally, as we begin to pray, you know, in the you know, in the table of communion, in the table of communion, right? Jesus was saying the same thing here. Um, okay, so so before that, First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. Let's look at that quickly. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. First Corinthians 14. And verse 26. Quickly, you have two more scriptures to go, then, then we'll go. Look at this. He said, Brethren, when you come together, each of you, I 
has a son. Some has teaching, some has tongues, some has revelation, some has interpretation. Listen, let all things be done for what? Edification. Let it build the church. Let it build the church. Let it be something that you are contributing that is building somebody. That is impacting someone negatively. Come on, let me say this again. Please, don't join the people that just don't understand the mystery of the body of Christ. Don't join. And let me say it again so. God has plenty children. You have plenty children, no? Some, they behave somehow. And it's not stop being his children. We are prodigal son and we are prodigal elder brother. Right? We are prodigal sons and we are prodigal elder brother. They are two different, they are, they are the same father. Right? Jesus told the story of a man, two, two, two brothers. He said, go to the farm and do some work for me. He said, yes sir, I will go. But he never. The person did not go. He told another one, go to the farm. He said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm tired. Then he repented and went. I go, okay, ask, who has really obeyed? Right? Who has really obeyed? So, so God has plenty of children. Don't be quick to criticize people. Don't be quick to do what? To criticize people that they don't have, they don't behave the way you be, you behave, does not make them in bad people. I, I, I was telling them, I said, some of us, when we get to heaven, ah, we go shock. The kind of people you will see there, you'll be wondering, hey, you too. <laughs> because these are the people we have written off that they are going nowhere. Let me tell you, God is more than doctrines. God is more than doctrines. God's love is deep. The death, burial, and resurrection is more than doctrine. Somebody say, eh, you raise hand like this to pray. I don't want to say, you need to pray. I don't want to say, you bear like this to pray. And all of you are using you know, doctrine to slice the body of Christ. The key thing is that what is the one that binds us together? What is it? The blood of Jesus. And it's thicker than water. Right? The blood is the one that binds us together. They told Jesus, they said your mother and your brother, they are outside looking for you. To tell you how important this is. He said, tell them that the ones that hear me, they are my mothers and they are my brothers. Tell you that even when blood is thicker than water, spirit is thicker than blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, do good to, the, to all men. Especially, prioritize your family. Especially those that are in the household of faith. Before I give my lamb, eh, that is begging me for two nera, or for 200 nera, this thing, I will have given 20,000 nera to my family member in the household of it. Do good to all men, no, but prioritize the people in the household of it. Prioritize it. You know, people that love to do to people outside, but their family member, they are suffering. God said, mm -mm, prioritize the people in the household of it. You have something to give. You have gifts, you have talent, you have skill, you have the call of God, you have prayer, you have praise. You, you know, my brother was saying that some of us, we are on Instagram, we don't even follow freedom courts. You follow other churches. But your own family is not appealing. They say, ah, but I follow now. How many of you even like the posts? So, I, I correct the communication that they are doing well. Come on, tell me you're that for them. But the one that is not that is not adding value to you directly or directly is where they are seeing you. <laughs> Do good to all men, but 
out, especially those that are in the household of faith. Somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. So Jesus broke himself and get. Let's look at this quickly. You know, in the book, we're closing with this right now. First Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 to 30. We are, we are asking that if you can sing and you are sitting in the congregation, come and join the kingdom voices. Some of you, you will still leave this place. You will not say, come out. <laughs> Give your house for house fellowship. We are looking for houses in Lhasa. You have big, even if it's kubiku. Invite Jesus into your house. You will say, mm, Odeshi. What are we going to do to change your mind? <laughs> Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11. Let's quickly read for verse 27. We're going to close with this. He said, Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread and wine and, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, on a worthy manner, we be guilty of the body and the blood of the, of the Lord. Wherefore, whosoever... Sh- Please help me. Are we? Are we true? Okay, give me verse 28. 28. Let, but let a man examine himself. So, let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Go on, please. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eat and drink damnation. Judgment to himself. So he said, You are doing disservice to yourself. I'm going to explain that. He said, Not discerning the body, not recognizing the body. So, for people to come, so this is actually beyond Holy Communion, actually. It's beyond the body. Remember, discerning the word is that discerning the lost body. Which is the discerning the law. So when people the 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 the, the jack here is this people come to the church for holy communion and they are fighting over bread. And Paul, like, ah, are you hungry? Eat at home before you come. We will understand that the Nigerian economy, you know, but eat at home before you come. So, when you come, let things be done orderly. Now, why is he saying this? Listen. The reason why he's saying this is this. How can you come to a place and you don't and don't recognize the operations and the dealings of God? You are not recognizing gifts, talents, and graces that God has invested in people. Because when you come into the place, from the place of disorderliness, you cut yourself out of what God is doing. So, and he said, go on please, I want to show you that last part. The last one said, in verse, is it 29 now? Uh, 30, look at this. Look, 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 look at that one. He said, verse 30. Give us verse 30. He said, because you don't discern the body, you approach the body anyhow. You are not discerning the grace, the anointing, the, the power that God has invested in the body. He says, for this reason, many are weak. This is not talking about unbelievers or church members. Some are weak. Some are even sick among you. And many are asleep. No, it's not, it's not that they're enjoying, not the deep sleep home. The word sleep means means dead. So it means that God has invested in the church your deliverance. But you are not assessing it. God has put grace here. But you are not laying hold on them. There are people here because of unforgiveness you are carrying body. And the flow of God to you, you are stopping it. Not discerning the body. The things that 
you are supposed to come by corporate anointing and corporate worship should break off your neck. You carry it back home. Why? Because you don't allow the flow of God's grace and the anointing to flow into your life. You keep questioning it. If you don't discern the body for this reason, many are sick, many are weak. The Bible says, if any man is sick, right? He said, let him come to the headers. So, that means there is a provision for your healing. But if you refuse to lay all your needs, what will happen? It can lead to death. And they say, oh, this person is a believer and he's serving God. Though. You know, Bible says, we know in part. Because we know in part, they just lead to, you don't know the extent God has even gone to help some people, but they refuse to be helped. You say this, how this thing has been in, 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 in my family. But you have now come to the family of God. Why we stay remain? Why we they remain? Why? Everything that God has made available to break that off your neck, yet you are not assessing it. I was telling them, I was sharing with the prayer group during the week. I said you cannot intercede for one thing and still speak against it. You can't intercede for one thing as the reason why some people are cut off is that they have spoken so badly about the body of Christ. And the provision of God for the body cannot be, cannot reach them. Cannot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I pray for you that everything that heaven has made available for you in the body, in the name of Jesus, they flow to you. In the name of Jesus, they flow to you. In the name of Jesus, they flow to you. Shout a believing amen. amen. And also, what God has put in you that others also should benefit from. In the name of Jesus, grace to release them come upon you now. I said grace to release them come upon you now. I said grace to release them come upon you now. In the name of Jesus. So when we come together, it's no one man show. Don't look at pastor, it's pastor. No. It's a corporate grace. I carry something. You carry something. I carry fire. You carry petrol. When petrol down fire, what will happen? Explosion. Explosion. But stop carrying water. Stop carrying water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember in Acts 4, the Bible says, as they began to pray, there was earthquake. Earthquake. How can you have issues and you come to church and you return the same? It's not true. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. I remember that when I come to church, I will place, I will place so much faith. Virtue, the Bible says when there's expectation, virtue flows. What is expectation? Expectation draw first vessel. Draw it. The woman, Jesus Christ was going. He was not ready to pull out. The woman touched the hem of his garment. Then power flowed to the woman. Jesus Christ said, who touched me? They said, ah, bros. Nobody's touching you now. He said, but somebody touched me purposely. And that was it. How many of you come to church and touch God purposely? Let me tell you, I'm even seeing a company now. And God said that company is going to go so global. He said the way it looked like it, he, he looked as if nothing, you know, struggling here and there. But hear me and hear the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will cause it to go global. I know you know, I know you know I'm talking to you because it's something that is in your heart. Hear me and hear the Lord. In the name of Jesus, it's going to go global. The first thing that you're going to do is that I'm seeing a call from Dubai. Dubai becomes your gateway to the world, says the Lord. He said it becomes your gateway to the, to, to the whole world, says the Lord. And I decree and declare, may that door open unto you now. 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 In the name of Jesus. 
when we come to church, we enjoy God's presence because we are all carrier of the same. Carrier of the same. You cannot be yoked or heavy laden and leave this place the same today. Can we rest on our feet? You, we don't have time because we <laughs> over, over short our time. Oh my God, we are over short our time. Oh my God. Hallelujah. One minute, can you lift up your hands and just pray in other tongues? Pray in other tongues. There's so much in, in this house this morning. So much. Pray in other tongues. You can pray in other tongues. Just pray in other tongues. Slow baradabasha. You have 30 seconds. Do that quickly. 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 Shaparata kaparakota kapai. Rabakoska. Rabaleke sokre. Eshak rabade. Sarabalata kasha. Rabate. Sheke rabate ka. Rabakata kapaya. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Just rule. Oh, somebody. Just one person. Just hold one person. And speak to that person. In the name of Jesus, I command new dawn. I command new season. I command new dawn. I command new season. Everything that the Lord has not planted in your life, by I command them broken. I command them uprooted. Whatever that is a situation in your life, let the power of God touch you now. Pray. Pray for the power of God. For your brother, for your sister. I release God's power. Come on, pray for them. In the name of Jesus, I, I release God's power. There's a power of God in you. There's a power of God in them. Declare, in the name of Jesus, I release God's power over you, your family, the work of your hands, your business, your career. I release God's power. Come on, release God's power. Release God's power. That as they go this week, they encounter God's power. They experience God's power. Come on, come on, come on. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. We release more power. We release God's power over your life and your destiny. Rapa ko si rapa. Regebe regede barakata. Sherebe gede. Sharabalaka. Rebele koto kotoya. Rebele ko si rikapaya. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Anyone that is that is burdened and is heavy laden in this place this morning, we proclaim your rest. We proclaim your rest. Whatever that has latched on your soul, we declare now lose your grip. We declare now lose your grip. We declare now lose your grip. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Before I pray the final prayer, if you are here this morning, you know you are not part of our family. You are not born again. You, don't, you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. I would like to pray for you. Wave to me now if you are here. Wave to me. Is anyone here? Wave, wave, wave. Is anyone? You are not part of a family. Everything that is happening here, it does not concern you. You cannot just come when you don't have the name attached to you. Is anyone? Is anyone? Raise the hand. Let me see if there's anyone here. Thank you, Father. Oh, Rabba Katakapa. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am praying for you this week. We connect together as a family of God. We declare that everything our hand touched this week prospers. Everything responds positively to us. In the name of Jesus, we receive access to the things that God has in store for us in the name of Jesus. As we go this week, I decree and declare darkness become light before us. The testimony that we leave you don't found it. The testimony that we bet many more testimonies. The testimony that we gather crowd to
to celebrate with you. In the name that is above our name, this week may it happen to you. This week may it happen to you. Every plan of the enemy that is contrary to the will and the purpose of God for your life, we gather as a family we declare that they are null and void in the name of Jesus. We nullify them in the name of Jesus. We nullify them in the name of Jesus. We nullify them in the name of Jesus. You will go out with peace. You will let forth with joy. You will go out with peace. You will let forth with joy. Mountains shall clap for you. Hills and valleys they shall skip like a ram. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. It is so. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. You can do more than that. Jam those hands together for Jesus.